welcome to Bay Area Psychology. From time to time, I come across a book that seems too marvelous not to share. We did this earlier in the year with Daniel Goleman's book, Emotional Intelligence. Eccentrics, a study of sanity and strangeness by Dr. David Weeks and Jamie James, is such a book. The dictionary tells us that an eccentric is someone who deviates from the conventional or established norm or who is different from the rest of us, which leads me to ask, who is the norm and who is us? Well, Dr. Weeks spent 10 years interviewing individuals who had been described by themselves or others as odd, peculiar, or marching to their own drummer. As a result of his research, he came to more clearly define the characteristic of eccentrics and differentiate it from mental illness, and in the process became more accepting of his own idiosyncrasies. We are fortunate to be joined this evening by Ruth White from the Suicide and Crisis Line here in Santa Clara County. Over the years, she's had the opportunity to encounter a variety of people, some of whom no doubt meet the criteria for eccentrics. I want to thank you for joining us, Ruth, and I appreciate you making the time to come down. Thank you. And uh, share some of your experience with us. It's very nice to be here, Mary. I, you know, one of the things I did when I called you is I said this was a book that I'd come across actually a while ago and I've always wanted to talk about um, because I was just absolutely charmed by it. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to, as we talk about it, um, anecdotes or things from your life that seem to occur to you. Okay? One of the things he did come up with is 15 characteristics. And in a minute, mm -hmm. what we'll do is review those um, each individually. But. Um, uh, one of the things we could start with is kind of your first impression when you were reading this. I mean, did anyone or anything come to mind uh, when you started reading? I was laughing out loud in a uh, in a coffee shop actually, and the woman in the table uh, sitting next to me was leaning over, saying, "What are you reading?" And it, the book, just reading the book, uh, and having it around provoked a lot of response from people, mm -hmm. and uh, some good stories of eccentrics they knew and loved. Well, and I think that's one of the things that I actually I, I loved about the book, which is it really, in a way, normalizes the fact that all of us have uh, either known somebody or even been described ourselves mm -hmm. as perhaps a little bit different. And um, <laughs> yeah. it sort of says, oh, there's lots of us. So. <laughs> yeah, we're a pretty strong army, I think. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, and I agree. Most of us are eccentric uh, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing to worry about. Uh, mm -hmm. and, I, and I would say that the author, um, David Weeks, he really makes a strong point about most eccentrics are pretty happy yeah. with the way things are and um, didn't even know they were eccentric until someone said, you know, you're weird. <laughs> they, they don't realize that they're happy, uh, pretty contented. Um, most of them are using all their abilities as best as they can mm -hmm. and uh, provocatively yeah. and seem very happy. Well, and part of it, as I understand it, has to do with the lack of need for external affirmation. They don't need a lot of um, approval from mm -hmm. other people, mm -hmm. not a lot of support. So because mm -hmm. they're so internally driven, that's really uh, how they're measuring themselves. Mm -hmm. And it would seem to me, as I was reading it, really the only obstacle they would have is other people in the sense um, of maybe encountering other people who couldn't uh, be as tolerant or couldn't be patient with it. Otherwise, I mean, and that's, we see that even in personality disorders. You yes. know, a lot of times people will come in for counseling because other people are having problems with them. But yes. Left and to their own, they'd be fine. They would be fine, and uh, it, they only generally seek counseling uh, when something has become intolerable for those around them. Right. And, uh, the, those are kind of tough cases because I think when you sit in the room with an eccentric, there generally isn't a lot you'd want to change. That's right. Uh, not that we make change uh, for our patients or our clients, but uh, the very fact they're there because someone told them they should go there, um, be it their manager or spouse or children or neighbors, you know, somebody is uncomfortable. So they've arrived here and with sort of a bemused, uh, right. bemusement, I would yeah, say. Yeah, like what a, am I doing here? A real strong component of an eccentric um, is, uh, you know, well, uh, they told me to be here, and uh, now you, you do what you're supposed to do <laughs> and right. uh, uh, make this whatever you're supposed to make. And they're often uh, uh, pretty, oh, how would you say, kind of, they're not real comfortable with psychology or therapy generally. You know, mm -hmm. they're, 
they consider this, uh, you know, sort of woozy to them, and yeah. uh, they'd rather be fishing. Uh, as a matter of fact, the f my favorite person in this book, I well, I was, I have to have a favorite or two, uh, was this man in Scotland uh, who wanted to be the complete uh, angler. He and in Scotland, the British Isles, they take fishing, as you know, very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And so he developed a, an idea that if he was a tree and appeared like a tree <laughs> and floated a blossom <laughs> in the water that the fish would uh, bite better. So he used to dress up as a tree <laughs> and do this. And of course, people walking by would be absolutely you know, frightened out of their wits. You can just imagine <laughs> this guy. And, uh, and uh, that, that was just wonderful. You know, I, I was curious if it worked. Actually. Yeah, that would be interesting, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that was part of the characteristic, too, was being very convinced of the rightness mm -hmm. of their point of view. There was a sense of, well, of course, if I dress up as a tree, mm -hmm. this will work. I mean, yes. it, it, it's so simple or obvious. It, it, and it's somewhat concrete when yes. you look at it, but then there's sort of an elegance mm -hmm. uh, to the whole thing mm -hmm. of, uh, if you really want to dress up as a tree, okay, you know, and float these blossoms in the water that the fish will pick at. and. I, I just I loved the whole idea, the, the sort of the mixture of sublime and the very concrete. Yep. Well, you know, the author pointed out that eccentricity is certainly not a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I had made a mark in the book. Uh, he had mentioned a couple of um, older examples. He mentioned Benjamin Franklin, who took air baths um, yes. for his health by mm -hmm. sitting naked in front of an open window and breathing deeply. I guess Lord, Lord uh, Mondado also practiced nudism, as did mm -hmm. Charles Richter, the inventor of the earthquake scale. Alexander Graham Bell covered the windows of his house to keep out the pernicious rays of the full moon. And he also tried to teach his dog to talk. Isn't it great? <laughs> and, uh, I the, love stories like this. Yeah, the evolutionary philosopher Herbert Spencer, who coined the phrase survival of the fittest, wore velvet earplugs and a bulky one-piece garment of his own design when he was home as an aid to concentration. <laughs> <laughs> The energy so he vortex. His friend said he yeah. looked like a like a bear. So basically, he sat around the house, <laughs> looking like a bear with earplugs. But he was content at home, you know, doing doing what he wants to do. Uh, you know, the more I hear about Benjamin Franklin, you know, the more I like him, uh, because it, little bits c keep coming up in history that have been, uh, mm -hmm. you know, attributed to him. So it was just one more reason to, you know, like old Ben. Well, you know, one of the the other things he pointed out was. <clears throat> that in general, um, it sounds like men have been more recorded over time yes. in terms of uh, mm -hmm. actual records of eccentrics, uh, more so than women. And they talk about that extensively in the book, about that as a weakness in the study, uh, that it was really the wealthy uh, upper classes that are more recorded because, uh, of course, other people were just trying to live, and the wealthy had more time uh, to indulge themselves or maybe not indulge, maybe be the best person uh, in their own unique way, and that women stayed home. Uh, it's, it's a ver uh, very much male-dominated book, and, and the authors admit that you know, history just does not record uh, women uh, as outside of the home. And um, even today, and I, and I thought this was a really good and interesting point, is that um, hospitalizations for emotional problems is much higher for women and girls Absolutely. for much uh, less uh, severity of symptoms and diagnosis. Even today, it's, it still is carried out that it's uh, eccentricity and other mental problems, if you want to label it that, are less tolerated in girls and women. Well, and that brings up a good point, because he did differentiate between mm -hmm. mental illness mm -hmm. and eccentricity. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can be eccentric and also have a mental illness, but mm -hmm. it certainly doesn't mean that you do. Right, it doesn't preclude. And that's one of those myths mm -hmm. that um, if there's something different about you, there must be something mentally mm -hmm. wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, actually the reality he found is that their self-report um, of feeling you know, not depressed mm -hmm. and feeling okay with themselves was actually mm -hmm. pretty high. Yeah, he used the uh, Cattell 16 personality factor scale, which that's a very useful, I mean, I think most of us have used that mm -hmm. in our practice, and uh, uh, that was very interesting to me. Uh, also, how the men versus women ranked, but the happiness level and the sense of self and the confidence and, and stabilization, I thought, very high uh, mm -hmm. in all those categories. And uh, that, that, was, that was an interesting use of a very 
uh, medically built model yes. uh, to be used for something like a study on eccentricity. Yeah, yeah but I, that was I, very like hard that. to define to begin with. Very hard. And I think that's his attempt in this book is to create more of a sense of it and acceptance of it uh, rather than as you have pointed out, being fearful, et cetera. Being, yeah, yeah, or just sort of saying, well, that's weird. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at some of those characteristics. Okay. Uh, we'll take a look at our first graphic and see them clearly. We've got non-conforming, uh, creative, strongly motivated by curiosity, idealistic, happily obsessed with one or as many as uh, six hobby horses, aware from early childhood of being different. And we'll start with those, and I have those in front of me. Um, at this point. In terms of non-conforming, um, it struck me that when he did his research, even in childhood, that um, these children were aware that somehow they were different. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact, uh, he said a lot of them would, re would report feeling impatient with other children, feeling that other people were too slow, they couldn't keep up with them, feeling that um, sort of a, a dis that other people held them back because they wanted to try things in non-conventional ways mm -hmm. and uh, felt kind of anchored by other people. And you know, just talking about that reminds me of someone, so many people that I know, you know, family members, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, about uh, that, uh, the sense that for many eccentrics, uh, formal education was a huge waste of a good day. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I think that probably still holds true, though I think I'm one of the, I guess I'm one of the few people that think that education has improved, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, very yeah. true. Well, yeah, because it's, it's really designed sort of to hit the medium mm -hmm. ground, mm -hmm. and uh, the, he, what, he, what he noticed even in the studies, the Cattell study, mm -hmm. was everybody falls in one area or the other. Eccentrics mm -hmm. all tended to be extreme, either very much had a characteristic or had none of it at all. So they definitely don't fit the medium category. What we're going to do is take a quick break. Uh, stay tuned. When we return, we'll learn more about eccentric behavior.